What's up, ladies and gentlemen? In this video, what I wanna do is go through three common mistakes that I see students make time and time again, either on their homework, in class, on a test, or on a quiz, when they're trying to solve quadratics. So if you don't wanna be making these mistakes, or just a little curious if maybe the student next to you is making them, let's go and check out these mistakes one at a time. But it's important to know, I'm not doing them in order of severity or how often each one of them happens, but I think it's important for you to know and understand each and every one. The first mistake I see students make is always trying to use inverse operations when solving quadratics. So this is a really big common one, especially when students are first learning how to solve quadratics. And it makes sense because when we learn how to solve linear equations, what do we do? We do inverse operations. So we have a whole bunch of practice of using inverse operations. And then typically one of the first equations that we use to solve with quadratics is when there's only one X. And when you only have one X, you can use inverse operations. That's what we call using the square root method. However, once we have a quadratic with a quadratic term, as well as a linear term, we can not use inverse operations any longer. So to kind of give you a little bit of context to kind of see what happened, like for instance, if we had like this first equation, a lot of times what I'll see students do is they'll say, all right, well, you know, let's go ahead and add the four X to the other sides. And then I have an X squared isolated, right? Which is a 12 X, you know, plus a 16. And then to get rid of the square root, this is what we previously did. And that was wrong. That was only when there was one X. But again, when we previously did this, we took the square root to both sides. And then I can just, I don't know, I'm just making some things up that are going to be incorrect because, you know, sometimes students will simplify this to be like a plus or minus a two square root of three X, you know, I don't know, plus four, some kind of weird answers like that. Obviously you can't have X in the answer. So maybe this be like, eh, maybe it doesn't exist. And let us kind of forget about or something like that. But again, don't do that. What you simply want to do in this case, they had the right idea, right? Getting everything to one side. So typically what you want to do in this case is actually take this equation. And actually they had the right idea to get everything over to the same side. However, what we want to do is get everything over to the same side. So therefore we can set it equal to zero. And then maybe something in here, you know, we'll see some weird stuff like students will do They'll say like, oh, let me go and get the five all by itself. And then I get an X squared plus a four X equals five. And then they say, oh yeah, I'm supposed to factor or something like that. So let's factor out an X. And then I have an X times an X plus four four equals five. And then let's use the five product rule X equals five and X plus four equals five. And again, hopefully you're following me, ladies and gentlemen, this is not correct, right? So don't do this. Okay. Those are the mistakes or a lot of things that I see students make. What you want to do is set it equal to zero and you need to use factoring or the quadratic formula. To go ahead and solve your quadratic. Now this video is not designed to actually show you the steps of solving quadratics by factoring or quadratic formula. However, you can definitely check out the videos and playlists I have in the description, as well as at the end of this video for more examples. Now, one thing I said that was very important, set your equation equal to zero, because guess what? That is mistake number two. Students don't set the equation equal to zero and they tried to apply factoring or quadratic formula. So in this example, there's kind of two different ways students will make mistakes sometimes if they don't set it equal to zero. Again, the way to properly do this is set it equal to zero and then look to factor or apply the quadratic formula. You could also do completing the square, but I like to focus on those two. One of the key mistakes that then students will make is they'll say, well, let me just go ahead and use the quadratic form. And we say, okay, yeah, that's a great idea. But the problem is if you don't already set it equal to zero, your A, B, and C are going to be incorrect right? Because remember the quadratic formula comes from the standard form of AX squared plus BX plus C is equal to zero. So if you're going to say the mistake that students will make is they'll say A is equal to two, B is equal to negative six, and then C is equal to seven. Well, that is incorrect. And guess what? When you plug those values into the quadratic formula, then you're going to get the wrong solutions. So don't do that. Make sure if obviously you've set this equal to zero, you'd actually notice that A and B are correct, but C would actually be a negative seven. And the other example that students will do if they don't set it equal to zero, they'll kind of do, I already showed it to you, but it's like they just factor out an X right here. And then they're like, whatever's left over. And then either I'll set that equal to seven or set it equal to zero. So sometimes they're like, oh, that's equal to seven. So set it equal to that. Or they'll say, I don't know, like two X equals zero X minus three. Just pretend there's a zero there and go ahead and solve. So do not do that. Those are not correct. Again, what you're simply going to do is subtract the seven to the other side. So subtract a seven to both sides here. And then you have the equation two X squared minus six X minus seven equals zero. And now you can try to see if that is factorable or go ahead and use the quadratic formula. All right, guys. And the last tip is pretty simple, but I see it time and time again, because especially when you're first learning solving quadratics, it can be overwhelming with all these different techniques, all these different ways to, you know, solve the quadratic. And especially sometimes the frustrations of practicing with factoring and everything you have to do in your brain. So once students learn the quadratic formula, it's kind of like this. Where students finally feel like saved, like, aha, now I can finally go ahead and solve any quadratic. And guess what? It's absolutely true. You can use the quadratic formula to solve for any quadratic. However, I'm going to list it as mistake number three, solving the quadratic too early 
because it does take some time. And especially once we get into upper level mathematics or doing more difficult problems, if you're going to always rely on solving a quadratic by using the quadratic formula, it's going to slow you down. And eventually it's going to impede your ability to be able to solve equations in a manner that's going to allow you to, you know, finish your homework on time or finish a test on time. So obviously there are some difficult quadratics where you might just feel like definitely jumping into the quadratic formula is going to be the best. You know, those problems when like A is equal to one, I get it. But when A is not equal to one, or when you have square numbers, look to your special factoring techniques to help you go ahead and factor quickly. Okay. So in this example, you can see my A is equal to one, right? And I'm basically like, all I need to do to determine if this is factorable is just look at the factors of negative five, see if they can go ahead and add to four. And again, you can see that, yes, this does actually work. I wouldn't want to go through the quadratic form here. I can quickly and easily factor this to an X minus five times an X plus one is equal to zero. And Hey, guess what? I have a product equal to zero, not any number, a product equal to zero. So therefore I can actually use the zero product property correctly this time, not a mistake to actually get my answer. So that's actually kind of cool. Now in the next example, a lot of students will say, uh Oh, I have an A equals one. A is not equal to one. So I'm not even going to try to factor this, right? But I don't want you to be confused with that because when your first term is square number and your last number is a square number, you could have a perfect square trinomial, not always but you could have a perfect square trinomial. What you want to do is check your middle term. If your middle term is two times the square root of your first and last term, then you have what we call a perfect square trinomial. So just to kind of algebraically show that to you, if I have a squared plus a two AB plus B squared, that's a perfect square trinomial, which can be broken down or factored into an A plus B quantity squared. What we're basically looking for is the same numbers are going to multiply to give you two and the same number is going to multiply to give you one, right? And that works like two times two and one times one. I'll actually write it down in factored form and then we can simplify it as a binomial squared because I want you to be able to check your work here. But I recognize that, you know, the square root of four is two, right? The square root of one is one. Two times one is going to give me two, which works for that coefficient. So therefore this would look like a two X plus one times a two X plus one and two X plus one times two X plus one. You can see two X times two X is four X, right? One times one is one and the middle and the outer terms add to four X. So you can see this works again. I totally forgot. This is equal to a zero, right? So actually we wanted to actually go ahead and solve this. We'd have a two X plus one quantity squared is equal to zero. Notice I only have one X now, right? So now I can use my inverse operations and then you could just take the square root of both sides. You get a two X plus one equals zero. And then you could say X equals a negative one half. So there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, those are some of the key mistakes that I see students make. The only thing I didn't do is solving the quadratic formula. But again, I have playlists on multiple examples of me solving it, which you guys can go ahead and check in the playlist down below. But hopefully this video was helpful in making you aware of the mistakes that students make. If there's another mistake that you see students make or that you've made in the past, feel free to let me know down in the comments and feel free to check out the next video I created for you here. Cheers.